morning ladies and gentlemen my name is Andreas Nurjaya Utama but you can call me Norman I am the student of UNES taking the graduate program majoring in English department today I'm going to talk about sense relations in the class of semantics lectured by Professor Warsono and the topic that I'm going to focus today is the oppositeness and dissimilarity of sense and ambiguity. In the previous unit, we completed our introductory view of sense relations presented by Mr. Hamdan. Now, our topics include what has been termed oppositeness of meaning. Modern semanticists have explored and mapped many areas within this area of meaning that go well beyond the simple traditional oppositeness notion. A traditional view of antonymy is that it is simply oppositeness of meaning. This view is not adequate as words may be opposite in meaning in different ways, and some words have no real oppositeness. Okay, for practice quickly here, uh, what would you say are the opposites of the following words? Hot, yes, it is cold. Thick is the opposite of thin. Okay, now what about lunch? Do you know what the opposite of lunch is? It is not real. We are not sure whether it is breakfast or dinner. Hot is not the opposite of cold in the same way as thick is not the opposite of thin. So we will not talk of simple oppositeness of meaning, but we will define the basic types of antonymy. The first is binary antonyms or complementarity. They are predicates which come in pairs and between them exhaust all the relevant possibilities. If the one predicate is applicable, then the other cannot be and vice versa. Another way to view this is to say that a predicate is a binary antonym of another predicate if it entails the negative or the other predicate. For example, true and false are binary antonyms. If a sentence is true, it cannot be false. If it is false, it cannot be true. Alternative, alternatively, if something is true, this entails that is not false. If it is false, this entails it is not true. For the practice here, are the following pairs of predicates binary antonyms? Chalk and cheese? No. Same and different? Yes. Copper and tin? No. Dead and alive? Yes. Married and unmarried? Yes. Love and hate? No. Yeah. So chalk and cheese? Uh, no. If something is not chalk, yeah, of course, it is not necessarily cheese and so on yeah and sometimes two different binary antonyms can combine in a set of predicates to produce a four-way contrast like in these predicates uh, yeah, for the difference of male and female for adult and non-adult yeah uh, for the adult male is man and female is woman and for the non-adult of male is boy and female is a girl yeah. In the chart, girl was diagonally opposite of man. Yeah, would you uh, normally think of girl as the antonym of man? No, one could normally think of either woman or boy. We see that combinations of binary antonyms produce more complicated. But that within such systems, the most natural way to pair of pairs of antonyms is along the same dimension, for example, man and woman, but not man and girl. 
If a predicate describes a relationship between two things or people, and some other predicate describes the same relationship when the two things or people are mentioned in the opposite order, then the two predicates are converses of each other. So, converses become the second type of antonymy. Converses or irrelational opposites. For example, parent and child are converses because x is the parent of y so they are in one order or line describes the same situation or relationship as y is the child of x is the opposite order or line for practice are the following pairs of expressions converses below and above yes grandparent and grandchild yes love and hate well, I'm not sure. No, yeah. Conceal and reveal. No. Greater and less. Yes. Own and belong to. Yes. The third type of antonyms is gradable antonyms. Two predicates are gradable antonyms if they are at opposite ends of a continuous scale of values. A scale which typically varies according to the context of use. For example, is hot and cold are credible antonyms. Between hot and cold is a continuous scale of values which may be given names such as warm, cool, yeah, not so hot or not so cold. What is called hot in one context, for example, of oven temperatures in the recipe book could well be classed as cold in another context, for example, is the temperatures of stars. Yeah. Uh, for the practice are the following pairs credible antonyms tall and short yes they are credible long and short yes clever and stupid yes top and bottom no love and hate yes okay a proportion is contradictory of another proposition if it is impossible for them both to be true at the same time and of the same circumstances the definition can naturally be extended to sentences, those a sentence expressing one proposition is a contradictory of a sentence expressing another proposition if it is impossible for both propositions to be true at the same time and of the same circumstances. Alternatively, a sentence contradicts another sentence if it entails the negation of the other sentence. Yeah, for example, this beetle is a contradictory of this beetle is dead. For the practice, let's say whether the following pairs are contradictories or not. John murdered Bill and Bill was murdered by John. No. And Mary is Anne's parent. Uh, Mary is Anne's child. Yes, yeah, they are contradictory as they are different. Okay. Next is ambiguous. A word or sentence is ambiguous when it has more than one sense. A sentence is ambiguous if it has two or more paraphrases which are not themselves paraphrases of each other. For example, we saw her duck is a paraphrase of we saw her lower her head and of we saw the duck belonging to her and these last two sentences are not paraphrases of each other therefore we saw her duck is ambiguous for the practice okay uh, let's see the chicken is ready to eat yeah uh, one person can get it as the chicken as food yeah is ready to be eaten the other person might think that it is the real chicken as animal yeah which is ready to eat some food okay so it's ambiguous next is homonymy a case of homonymy is one of an ambiguous word whose different senses are far apart from each other and not obviously related to each other in any way with respect to a native speaker's intuition. Cases of homonymy seem very definitely to be matters of mere accident or coincidence. For example, is the word bang, yeah? 
bank can be a financial institution and bank can also be the site of a river or stream this is the clearest case of homonymy next is polysemy a case of polysemy is one where a word has several very closely related senses in other words a native speaker of the language has clear intuitions that the different senses are related to each other in some way for example is the word earth earth in one side okay is our planet but earth in the other side can be referring to soil yeah for the practice let's decide whether the following words are examples of homonymy or polysemy bark of a dog and of a tree they are homonymy fork in a road and instrument for eating they are polysemy tail of a coat versus of an animal they are polysemy steer to guide and steer for young bull they are homonymy lip of a job and lip of a person they are polysemy and the last is punch which means blowing with a fist and punch uh, for kind of fruity alcoholic drink they are homonymy okay that's all my presentation about the semantic class uh, today about the sense of relations i hope you all get deeper understanding about this uh, thank you for your time and goodbye